Welcome to the Bright Vibe Podcast. At Bright Vibe, we believe everyone deserves to be happy. But in today's world, everywhere you turn, there is division and negativity. At Bright Vibe, we have created a global movement to bring 8 million people together who are inspired to live bright, live bold, and share bright vibes. Alone, it can be hard to change, but together we can change the world. Welcome to the Bright Vibe Podcast. Well, Jonathan Hunsaker, welcome to the show today. You are the founder of Organics and also Morning Man, and you are everything knowledgeable about supplements. Is that accurate? It's pretty close. Yes, I'm the founder. I don't know if I'm everything knowledgeable, but I've been in the supplement space for about six years and learned quite a bit, good and bad, about the industry. Yeah, perfect. And uh, I know a little, just you know, studying for the show and everything, I know a little bit about your background, but part of the reason that we wanted you to have, have you come on is really kind of dispel maybe some of the myths and get into why do we even need supplements and what the heck are, I mean, why? why? Um, because ultimately... You know, if we're going to live longer, if we're going to have more energy, we got to have a vehicle that will get us there. And part of that, I believe, is supplementation. But um, but you didn't start out as a typical healthy person. In fact, from some of the stuff I was <laughs> having fun looking at, you actually were, we, we like to call it the typical American diet, right? But I don't think there's a typical American diet, but you were on a typical fast food American diet. Would that be accurate to say for a while? Yeah, I was eating a lot of fast food. I was eating just a lot of junk food, and then I was drinking a lot, smoked. I started smoking when I was 15, um, smoked for 20 years. I, I blew up to the point of like 265-ish pounds at my heaviest, and I'm only five foot eight, so it was... Uh, <laughs> that's it, right. You were as so, wide so as you that, were tall, I guess. Yes, exactly. So it, it was all belly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, got, I got really unhealthy. I was, I was really living as if I was going to die with all right. the smoking, drinking, and just eating crap. And so, so you were smoking, drinking, eating crap to your, to your story. And I guess what was the uh, catalytic event or what was the switch, right? Cause there's always a switch or, or a period of time, but you know, you, you went from one lifestyle to like a completely different lifestyle. So what was that? Yeah. And so at the time I was living on an island uh, off the coast of Panama down in Central America. Like everybody and does. So, like everybody, uh, like everybody, yeah, does. Like everybody, right. like does, everybody right? does, right? Everybody <laughs> lives off an island. So well, let's back up a little bit <laughs> further then because now we've gotten into the, what that, that's not the normal, typical American thing. So you're, why are you on this sure. island <laughs> in South America? So, you know, the, I think it was 2010-ish. I, I literally was watching House Hunters International with my girlfriend. <laughs> and I work online completely. Right. And I'm like, look at all these people down right. living on the beach somewhere. And I was living in Austin, Texas at the time, which is a, a wonderful place. Right. Uh, but it was really a, a conversation of why not. Mm. So we, decided, we, we were looking around at Costa Rica. Right. I talked to a buddy of mine who was an internet marketer as well. Um, he was saying, hey, you got to check out Panama. It's just as beautiful as Costa Rica. It's just half the price. Mm. So we flew down there without, and like, I think I booked a place to stay the night before we flew. And I <laughs> thought I was going to get off the plane. I thought I was landing in Hawaii. Right. right? Like, this is going to be all touristy and great. Didn't speak any Spanish. And it was just, uh, <laughs> it was quite the rude awakening when I got off the plane with my girlfriend looking around like, holy crap, what did we do? <laughs> um, and then we, we rented a car. We drove out to the beaches there the place that we had rented and it was just it was like landing it on another planet everything mm. was just totally different nothing like i had ever experienced before um and that that was kind of the moment was like let's move here right like, like right. let's let's see what it's like to be here i was so um ingrained in the american culture so right. sheltered had no idea what the rest of the world was like so we actually i signed a lease on that two-week vacation went home sold everything i owned and we moved there three months later Wow. Um, yeah, went there, took my dog and my girlfriend and, uh, we were living on the beaches there for about a year. Then we found out about a place called Bocas del Toro. Um, mm -hmm. it was an Island in the Caribbean. There was a lot of travelers that went through. There was a younger crowd where we first moved to there was a lot of older expats. Mm -hmm. We went and saw that place for a week and it was like, what the hell are we doing here? So right. we went back, so I signed a lease, went and packed everything up. We went out to the Island. Um, I think like a month after that, we were living out on the island. A lot of tourists were coming through. It was beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. And we lived we lived in a little shack that was built over the ocean. There's a little bit of a bay there. And so it was built on stilts over the water. You could see through the cracks in the floor. You could see the water below. <laughs> um, the front deck, you could jump right off of it oh, wow. into the Caribbean. It mm -hmm. was about chest high. There were starfish, crystal clear. But it was 
Yeah, they just barely put windows in the place, right. right? So, I mean, the wind blows through it. There's no air conditioning. There's not even a window in the bathroom. Like, it's just an open hole. You can't drink <laughs> the water. Um, but, it, it, you know, it changed the whole idea that you had to be rich to live in this paradise. We were right. paying $500 a month in rent. Um, beer was a buck. Rum and Cokes were a buck. You know, wow. cigarettes were cheap. And so, the partying just amplified even more at Got that it. time. Living on an island now. A bunch of travelers are coming through. I'm working online. Um, so that brings us to like, what was the whole, you know, mm -hmm. uh, catalyst, the change, there was several things. So it was 2014 that January I was, so I've gotten really good at internet marketing at this point. And I was really good at doing what people call launches, product launches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you see like the new iPhone come out and you think that there's this leaked picture and, and all that kind of stuff, all that's planned, right? Mm -hmm. So that everybody's all amped up and hyped up on this one day to go buy their iPhones. I was, do, I was learning how to do and perfecting how to do that online, but we were doing it with a lot of information products. Um, I got approached in 2014 to, if I wanted to get involved with somebody who was relaunching their book called The Truth About What, it was Cancer Step Outside the Box. That wasn't exciting enough. So I partnered up with him. We decided to create a documentary mm -hmm. um, called The Truth About Cancer. Mm -hmm. So I first started working on that, and it was like, and I started getting really kind of conscious to my life, right? I'm smoking, I'm drinking, mm -hmm. I'm not eating well. And now I'm about to film a documentary about alternative treatments to cancer, right? right. Meanwhile, I'm smoking. Right. Right at the same time, my which, which, girlfriend which is, at the time. Which is bad, right? I mean, for the, right. for, for the sake of clarity, <laughs> smoking and cancer are basically buddies, right? I mean, if, if there was Correct. two best friends in the disease world, smoking and cancer would basically be best friends. They'd be BFFs, right? Smoking, fast food, being overweight, you know, is, <laughs> is, is, a, num is, is a number one cause of, of all that stuff. So I was, right. I was on my path there. Um, and I didn't want to be a hypocrite, right? Like right. I, I just didn't want to do that. But it wasn't quite enough to have me quit. What really did it was my girlfriend got pregnant with my oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. As soon as I found that out, it was like, all right, I'm not going to be a fat dad. I'm not going to be a smoker around my kid. Right. right? I, like I didn't want to be that dad that was sitting on the couch and couldn't get up and play with his kids. Right. So it took a few months, took mm -hmm. quite a few times to quit, try quitting smoking mm -hmm. um, after smoking for 20 years. But ultimately, uh, July 15th, 2014, I quit smoking, mm -hmm. quit drinking. They had to go hand in hand. Is if right? I drank, yeah. I was just going to smoke again. Right. Um, I, I enjoy some beverages now. Um, right. I, I'm able to now, but I was not able to right. for a couple years. Right. Or it would have just triggered me back. So that was the number one thing for me. I, I find, you know, after doing a big transformation and coaching people on doing transformations and kind of understanding the health, a lot of times when people want to make a big change, they want to change everything at once, right? All right, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to go on a diet, right? I'm going to walk 10 miles a day. And they try to just tackle all these things where I think the number one thing to do is just tackle the biggest thing first. Right. For me, that was smoking. Got it. Drinking went along with it simply because that was the only way to quit smoking. Um, so I tackled that big thing first. After I kind of had that, you know, I was a few weeks down, a month down. I was never going back. Then I started looking at my diet. Mm -hmm. um, started messing around with things like keto, right? Keto was yep. getting uh, really yep. popular at the mm -hmm. time. So I tried some keto diets, mm -hmm. doing some fasting, some intermittent fasting, doing some running, things like that. So I was in the Truth About Cancer. We did that for um, a couple of years, around 2016. After doing that for a couple of years, we had a massive following of people wanting healthy supplements. Mm -hmm. um, I as well, right? I was on this journey. I'm losing right. weight, trying to get healthy, figuring out what supplements do we take, what stuff don't we take. We'd interviewed so many doctors in the series that I was very well connected at the point too to be able to talk to a lot of people about what are the best supplements. And what you found out is there was like, here's a good one over here, or this company makes a good turmeric supplement, but they didn't right. make like a really good lineup of everything. There was just like a good one here, a good one there. And you know, I'm finding out and I'm connected to all these doctors. So imagine how hard it is for other people to really understand and know what to take. Right. So that's when I decided to launch and launch a supplement company. Mm -hmm. At the time when we launched, it was called Epigenetic Labs. Um, it's now, we've now changed the name to Organics. But that's what I did. I went and I talked to doctors and I had different doctors formulating different supplements. We were doing the research on it. We were doing all of this stuff to like put together, how can we put together a really good lineup of good supplements so that you do, you could trust what you were taking. You didn't have to take 50 million different things. Um, we were blending things together. So you're not just taking a turmeric. You're not just taking this thing and that thing and end up taking like 50 pills every morning and night. Um, so that's kind of how that all evolved. 
Um, 2016, we launched it. 2018, we changed the name to Organics. And here we are now. We create organic supplements. And um, really, I think what we do the most that I'm most proud of is the education that we do. We have tons of articles, uh, put out tons of information on there. I have an in-house naturopath doctor where we do ask the doc questions Mm -hmm. every week. And people can just come and get their education. And I do podcasts. I do other Mm -hmm. interviews where I'm not here pushing my brand. It doesn't matter to me one way or another if you use my supplements or somebody else's. But it's understanding how to find a good supplement and understanding what is it that you might need or not need. And I think that's the biggest challenge because – after being in this space for so long, there's, you know, I, I hate to say, but it's 95% ineffective supplements right. um, that, that just aren't good. They're not doing much for you. They, they may have a placebo effect because you're taking a supplement, mm-hmm. um, which is okay to a certain extent, but you're not really getting much nutrients from most of the supplements out there. And so why do we need, um, you know, why, why do we need supplementation? Why do we need vitamins? I mean, can we not get what we need from food. You get some of it. The problem is, is just the over farming of our soils has depleted the soils from the nutrients. So if there's no nutrients in the soil, then there's no nutrients in whatever crop is growing there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and and I don't know all the exact numbers, but if you compare um, the nutrient density of broccoli now versus like 50 years ago, I think it's like, It was 70 times more nutrient dense Mm. back then. Right. So you didn't need supplements nearly as much back then when the food had all the nutrients in it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing too. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of people talk, well, just eat more animal based diets. You can eat a lot of meat, get a lot of nutrients from that. And yes, you can. But the challenge is, is what are they eating, right? Right. So if you're eating regular, uh, you know, cows that are grain fed and they're getting this corn, they're getting all this other stuff that has no nutrients in it then the meat isn't having as much nutrients in it either. Mm -hmm. So that's where supplementation comes in. And that's the challenge too. I think there's a misconception too that you can just pop a few pills and still eat at McDonald's, right? right? It it, it doesn't work that way either. So supplementation is just that. It's just to supplement the stuff that you're not able to get from your diet. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of people say, well, I'm I'm, I'm vegan or I'm plant-based. I'm eating all of this stuff. So I've got to be getting all the nutrients. No, you're not. You're you're just, you're just not. (laughs) What we've done to our soil is, um, we, we better make some changes quickly, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, or or there's not going to be any nutrients left in the stuff that we're eating. So that's where supplementation comes in. It comes in to just help fill those holes that you're not getting from what you're eating. Right. And typically, so kind of what's the, the baseline holes that you see, um, or that are most, um, have the most bang for the buck. So if somebody's only going to take X, Y, Z, what would be that? And I know without blood work and without other stuff, maybe that's, but if we're talking just general bell curve population, what should everybody pretty much be doing to be healthy? A, a good multivitamin. Mm-hmm. Um, hundred percent. That's everybody needs that just because it's helping to fill those, those different holes. Now the challenge is, is you can't just go buy your Centrum Silver. I actually, I was going to use their, their name or Centrum. Or I day. literally was going to throw that at you. I literally was going to say, I'm just going to throw out their Centrum. Just screw with them. The um, yeah. so so right so so okay so so most of the ones we see advertised, I would say almost all of the ones we see advertised on TV, the ones we see in the supermarket, the ones we see at the pharmacy, almost all of those are crap. Could I? Is that a fair estimation? <laughs> hundred percent fair. So they're synthetic, right? So they're synthetic vitamins. They're not derived from a whole food source, number one. And that's usually coming from oil and tar and byproducts, Hmm. right? So what they're doing is they're extracting these vitamins and minerals out of something that you would never eat anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they're putting it and they put it into a capsule or um, put it into a pill for you to take. You swallow it, and your body doesn't even recognize it as, as a, a food. It right. doesn't even rec- it, it, Yeah, it's, it's a total synthetic, like I said, oil byproduct. Um, I've interviewed doctors about this in the past where they talk about it. I mean, it, it literally is just passing right through. Right. Um, and one way you can really tell if a multivitamin, if you're absorbing it or not, is the color of your urine. Sure. Um, if your urine is coming out glowing yellow, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. stuff is just passing through. Your body's not absorbing it. Mm-hmm. So most multivitamins out there are just junk. They're garbage. What you really want to look for is a whole food multivitamin. Mm -hmm. 
But then there's different levels of whole food multivitamins. And I'm not saying whole food as in go buy it at Whole Foods. They sell a lot of synthetic stuff there as well. Right. What I'm saying is that it's made from whole foods. Look at the ingredient list on there. Mm -hmm. So that would be the bare minimum multivitamin. Mm -hmm. What I would say, the next step up from that is going to be an organic multivitamin. Now, is this is also something to really understand in the supplement space too, right? You can look, my supplements are up here behind me. Mm -hmm. None of them carry the USDA certified organic seal. And there aren't any supplements that come in a capsule that can do that. Mm -hmm. Because right now, in order to qualify for USDA certified organic, it has to be 95% or more organic. Mm -hmm. Well, the capsule itself makes up 7% of my product. Mm -hmm. So I have all organic ingredients, but I'm only at 93%. Mm. So you'll see on all of our supplements, it'll say made with organic ingredients, Got it. right? So just understand that. Now, if it's, um, you can get USDA certified supplements that are tablets. Mm -hmm. So the difference is, Press. right, is they've, they've packed the powder, yeah. really, they pressed yeah. it really tight. The challenge is, is your body's not absorbing that at the same. It's not breaking it down. It's not separating it. You're going to be better off getting it in a capsule. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure when you read the ingredients, what are the ingredients? Are they organic and are they whole food? Mm -hmm. So, and that matters a lot too, because as we're creating supplements um, and you're drying them out and you're refining them down, if it's not organic, then you're also getting higher levels of the pesticides, the herbicides, mm. the glyphosate, all of that that was sprayed on the crop to make the multivitamin of those ingredients, mm -hmm. that's all ending up in your supplement. So that's why organic really, just like organic matters in the regular world, mm -hmm. it matters even more when it comes to your supplements. Otherwise you're getting higher doses of glyphosate and all of that other stuff. And that's bad. So and whole that, food, just, just to be clear, that's, that's bad. That, that's bad. That's bad. If, if you, if you're putting chemicals in your body through supplementation, <laughs> that that's, that's bad. Right. I mean, and that's the challenge, right? Most of us are taking supplements to be better. And feel yeah, exactly. Better. And then but if it's, if it's not organic ingredients, you're literally putting more toxins in there and everybody right. knows Monsanto and glyphosate and Roundup and, and all the stuff that's going on there. Right. You know, what's really interesting, I, I lived in Panama, and then I also moved down to southern Chile after that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are not allowed to sell any um, wheat, corn, any products that have glyphosate on them. It's banned from oh, that wow. country. Wow. And they can't sell it in Chile. Mm -hmm. But you know where they export it to? The U.S. The US. <laughs> so they have fields there where they're right. spraying it with glyphosate that they will not feed to their own people. But they, but they will it. ship it up here Poison. and we'll get it up here. Poison so when we're getting foreigners. those blueberries, and, <laughs> yes, when you get your blueberries and your blueberries are from, we Chile. pronounce it chili here, but it's Chile, yeah. right? If you get your blueberries there, make sure they're organic. Right. Otherwise they're all sprayed with the glyphosate, all of that. Oh, so all of the pesticides, all of that stuff, bad, make sure that's right. not in your whole food. The next thing you want to look for is, are, is it fermented or sprouted? Right. So if the ingredients are fermented or sprouted, it's just opened up another level of bioavailability. It's kind of released more enzymes and it's already kind of started to when it's fermented, it's already started to use its enzymes to break itself down. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge, right? The challenge, you know, you ask what's the most important thing to, to take. I would say a multivitamin is number one. Mm -hmm. Second would be is a really good enzyme product. Right. Yep. The reason is, and not to get too sidetracked. No, no, go for it. Our ends, it's kind of like a, a, a bank mm -hmm. that we have. We have only so many enzymes um, when we're born, and we use those enzymes in every part of our body, but we use them to break down food. Mm -hmm. This is why you see a lot more people being lactose intolerant later in life, because they've used all the enzymes to break down um, the lactose early in life, and then there's no more in their body to break it down, so now you're intolerant for that. Mm. So... This is why a fermented, sprouted ingredients is that much better because it's got the enzymes there to already help it break down. And it's not deplete. It's not taking from your enzyme bank mm. to break down that food. Got it. So a really good enzyme product. And you want it to, you know, a, a good uh, proteolytic enzyme that has protease in it. That's really to break down proteins. Mm -hmm. um, that's, most enzymes out there are just filled with um, cheap enzymes to break down carbohydrates and fats. And that's not really what we need the most of. What we need the most of is the protease enzymes to break down proteins, hmm. breaking those down into amino acids so that we can absorb it better. We can use those nutrients. It can repair our body. Hmm. Um, a good 
protease enzyme, I take them on an empty stomach morning and night to go fix the issues that are in my body. And then I also take it before every meal to help break down the food that I'm eating. So a good um, proteolytic enzyme is good not just to take with food, but it's great to take on an empty stomach as it'll go in there and break down scar tissue. Um, it's been shown that, I mean, it can help um, break down tumors and different things like that. Nicholas Gonzalez, somebody who interviewed for the truth about cancer, who's since passed away, um, that's what he was healing a lot of people with, was a very high-dose proteolytic enzyme. Huh. Uh, he, he healed Suzanne Summers' cancer just with a high-dose enzyme. And that's what we have here. I, I always look behind me because they're up here. So mm -hmm. we have ours is called Enzyme 17. It has 17 different enzymes. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing about that is you could take 50 of them a day, 100 of them a day, and it's going to go in there and start repairing other things. Now, I can't, I'm not making that claim that mine will do that. I'm just saying a high proteolytic enzyme. Right. Cured <laughs> you cancer. You said it on this show, and uh, exactly, our attorneys exactly. are going <laughs> <right>. um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to. Right. But that's what Nicholas <laughs> Gonzalez. We're going to have to sign the disclaimer it. now. We're going to have our. <laughs> exactly. We'll, 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 we're going to bleep this whole section out. You're, we're done. <laughs> but, my my yeah. enzymes don't cure anything, they don't right. treat anything. <laughs> right, right. Um, just so provide I'm not benefit. making any claims. Right. But that's, and so, you know, I'm going down some different paths here, uh -huh. but that's, you know, yep. when we're looking all the way back to the multivitamin, whole food, right? Synthetic is just garbage. Make sure yep. it's whole food, then make sure it's organic. And if possible, some of the ingredients are sprouted or, or fermented. fermented. Got it. Okay. And then second of all, enzyme that's, I wrote the word down, but I'm not going to try to say it. Protolytic? A prote proteolytic. Proteolytic. Enzyme, I was which so means, close. Yes. Yeah. And it has uh, different protease enzymes in there. Got it. Okay. And, okay, so those are two. Give us a couple more. Then some of the other ones, it just, now we're starting to go down using supplements like plant medicine, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 it's hard for me to say, does somebody need it or not need it? Well, so, so a term... Well, one of the ones I hear all the time that, like, almost all of us are deficient in vitamin D, and then vitamin D helps with inflammation. It helps with uh, recovery. Uh -huh. It's good, you know, during COVID. And well, when I say during, uh, yeah, as we work through COVID continually, um, that it's, it has some good high dose vitamin D has some good effects of helping you recover faster anyway. That's what I've been hearing. So what, what's your take on vitamin it, D? Yeah, I think, I mean, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and please don't take this as me promoting products. I just, it helps me yeah. talk about them. Yeah. So we make a turmeric product mm -hmm. that we include 5,000 IU of vitamin D in there. Right. The reason we, so our turmeric has turmeric, has an organic triple fermented turmeric, mm -hmm. um, has organic ginger, has turkey tail, mushrooms, and then it also has vitamin D in it as well. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because that's used more for overall inflammation, right? Right. So turmeric helps with inflammation. Ginger does. The ashwagandha helps with inflammation. Oh, right. Vitamin D as well. So vitamin D is kind of known as the happy vitamin, happy hormone, mm -hmm. right? Because it, it changes your mood. It helps you feel better too. So I go, being out in the sunshine mm -hmm. feels good. It is good. It's not just it's bright and it's a nice day. That vitamin right. D that you're absorbing through your skin is actually, I mean, it, it improves your mood. Right. Um, and so vitamin D is good to improve your mood because it, it helps decrease the stress, which helps decrease the inflammation as well. When you get stressed, your body gets inflamed, mm -hmm. starts holding onto water, all of that stuff. So yeah, it just depends. It depends how much sunlight you're getting, right? Mm -hmm. If you need to supplement with vitamin D. I currently don't supplement with vitamin D mm -hmm. just because I'm outside. It's Texas right now. Mm -hmm. It's summertime. I'm outside in the sun a lot, just getting natural vitamin D that way. Mm -hmm. But when winter time comes and the sun is not shining as much, especially if you're in some Northern States and you're in the U S absolutely start supplementing with vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then the other one I hear is fish oil. What's your thoughts on fish oil? You know, I don't make a fish oil. Mm -hmm. I don't, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not a doctor scientist. Mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur who hires a lot smarter people than myself mm -hmm. to do a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a big take on fish okay. oil or not. Mm -hmm. I think what really matters there is getting good fats mm -hmm. overall, mm -hmm. right? So it's a matter of getting the omega-3s right. and not as much omega-6s. Right. And so I think that helps, but I'm, I'm, much more of the belief to try to get it from your diet first mm -hmm. and not get it from supplements. So can you try to eat 
better fats, good fats, and try to get it that way? Are you eating salmon once or twice a week? Um, a good, not farm raised salmon, right? right? Um, so are, are, are you finding ways to do that? But I think it's more about getting the fats than it is specifically fish oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then is there any other one before I ask some just overall questions? Sure. Um, I mean, there's, there's other good things, right? Mushrooms out there are great mm -hmm. to take. Probiotics are, are great to take. Right. Prebiotics are good. Um, I, I have another company called Morning Man. Mm -hmm. We make a green powder, which helps. It, it, it's like a multivitamin. It's just in a powder. It's like an athletic greens. Mm -hmm. um, we make that as well. And so you can get your nutrients in, in several ways, right? You can get it from a multivitamin mm -hmm. um, that you're swallowing. You can get it from something like athletic greens. You can get it from something like Morning Man something like that that's also giving you all the nutrients that you're just not getting in your food. So it doesn't have to be done in a capsule form. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'll say is, and, and there's a lot, you know, when you start getting into a whole food organic supplement, the price continues to rise. It becomes more and more expensive. Right. What I would say is you're better off taking half doses of an expensive, good, clean supplement mm -hmm. than you are taking a full dose of a crappier supplement. That you don't get so any benefit the best, from, right? Exactly. The, the best way to explain is, right, let's say a multivitamin is 60 bucks. It's whole food and organic, mm -hmm. um, $60 for a month supply. Mm -hmm. Centrum Silver is 30 Right. You're better off, you know, taking that multivitamin every other day, the mm -hmm. expensive one, and making it last two months to fit your $30 a month budget right. than you are just buying the cheaper stuff that's Centrum or that's being sold at Costco, that's being sold, you know, all of these things. It's like, it's like you see it too with, uh, with vitamin C, right? Everybody mm -hmm. says you got to be taking vitamin C and it matters, but what is it, right? It, you're getting ascorbic acid and all of it's synthetic. It's all made in the lab. That's why you're buying these bottles that are this big, mm. um, of vitamin C and it's got, you know, 5,000 milligrams. And mm -hmm. if you look at the daily, you know, value, it's, it's 2000% of what you need every day. Right. The challenge is your body's not even recognizing that as a food. Right. And so how much of it are you actually absorbing? versus finding a whole food vitamin C source. It's made from acerella cherries mm -hmm. or from camu camu or something mm -hmm. like that. It's not going to have the bling, right, right of 10,000% of your you know daily allowance right. um, that the cheap stuff is going to, but your body's going to recognize that as food and absorb it easier. And this is all this is an argument in the supplement space. Molecularly, they may look the same. Mm -hmm. Where I tend to argue the difference is, is there's other things with that acerella cherry. There's other things in the camu camu, mm -hmm. um, that the enzymes that are in there, the other parts of the plant that allow our body to recognize it as a plant and to absorb it as opposed to just a molecular structure that was made in a lab. Right. And typically all things that are made in labs are good for us, right? That's that we should all right. That's it. I don't. Hey, we, we got some new lab grown meat. I think that's coming out. I think we got yeah, all kinds exactly. Of stuff. It's, it's like yeah. If if you can't if it if it if it has more than you know one or two ingredients in it, it's probably not a whole food. But and when I say that, I mean that facetiously. But you know, obviously, the closer we can get to eating things that are you know grown in the ground, and yes, even though the soil's in a state of depletion, you know that's better than you know, eating stuff that's grown in a lab or, 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 or just like, uh, you know, the amount of, me the amount of medications that people are on, the amount of just, I I'm just, you know, I've got some relatives and I'm just, they're on eight, 10 different medications. I know that's probably norm. I mean, normalized, but I'm just like for ones for depression, ones for pain, ones for something. I mean, and when you go through them all, I'm just like, and then they wonder why they're having problems with their mental state or their mood or because they've taken something for that. So why is that? And I'm just like, yeah, just maybe exercise, getting out in the sun and eating, you know, whole foods and proper supplementation, right? And and a lot of those things will stop, you know, it's just not good for you, right? If it's manufactured in the lab, it's not, and I'm not saying medicine, I take medicine, you know, when, it, when it's called for, when it's needed. If I have a headache, I do take, you know, whatever, Tylenol or whatever it is for that, but it's not, but are you taking, is it something that people are just taking over and over day after day after day? I mean, it's not good for your body. It's just not. And I'm not a doctor and, and I, I'm not going to sign a disclaimer, but I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> common sense tells me if you're putting manufactured things in your body that weren't n normally designed to be in there, unless you have a specific 
a, I, I get it if you have a specific health condition, you're taking something for that specific thing. But once you get up over two or three meds, there's other issues in there, right? Well, and you did a whole series on cancer about, right? I mean. Uh, absolutely. Well, it, here's the challenge, too, is, you know, they, they do these studies on a, me, on a medication, and it might prove to be safe and have certain right. side effects. What there's not studies on right. is people taking three of these medications together, right. five of them together, things like that. And who knows what's happening you know, right. when you start those mixing all reactions. of those together. Reactions, yeah. Exactly. Right. And, and that's a big challenge. I mean, you know, I'm all for medicine, right? You break your arm, go to the doctor, yeah, yeah. do things like that. Like, like right. we've made yep. amazing advances, right. advancements in all of that. Where, where we're lacking is when it comes to just prescribing medicine to, to, to really put a bandaid on it. Like right. this is why I'm a big believer of going to see a naturopath. Yep. A naturopathic doctor is a real doctor. They're right. trained. They've gone to all the medical school. Right. The thing is they just believe differently. They believe in trying to solve the core issue mm -hmm. and they've had, they have a lot more training in nutrients um, and using herbs and using different things like that to heal the imbalance in your body. Right. So most doctors, they go to school. It's literally a couple hours that they get through eight years of training that's spent on, nut nu nutrition. on, um, uh, yeah, on nutrition. Right. And so, because that's just, even doctors now think, oh no, you take a pill for that. You know, your nutrition doesn't matter. What you eat doesn't matter. You have to be high as a kite. If you actually believe that to be true, right. I'm sorry. But if you think that what you put in your body doesn't matter when it comes to eating and all that, and how much you move your body doesn't matter. Um, then you're just, yeah, you, you, you've bought into the system. <laughs> right. You've taken the blue pill <laughs> right, you know, right. um, in, in the matrix and you just right. don't want to see the reality. Right. So this is where other supplements, I think, make a difference when you start using it for plant medicine, right? right? When you started to take turmeric for, instead of, you know, when you get a headache, instead of taking a Tylenol and ibuprofen, try to try turmeric supplements, see if that helps. Maybe it doesn't give you the instant relief. So maybe you do want to take that Aleve or that Tylenol for a day or two. But maybe adding turmeric into that regime, if you're getting um, constant headaches or you're having right. constant yep. pains or, right. you know, constant, you know, arthritis in your knuckles and things like that, right? You mm -hmm. can take an Aleve every day, but how about also start taking some turmeric and some other things that are natural anti-inflammatories anti sure. and then stop taking that Aleve and see if you actually need the Aleve anymore. Right. See if you can actually heal yourself through these other imbalances that, that are happening there. Um, and so like, it's hard to say what else do, do people need? I mean, there's great mushroom supplements out there. There's tons of supplements we don't make that are out mm -hmm. there that are phenomenal. Um, collagen, collagen is a great supplement for people to take, especially as you're old, as you're aging. Mm -hmm. Um, after about 25, you start producing 1% less collagen per year yeah. after about the age of 25. So mm -hmm. I'm 43 now. So that's 18% less collagen minimum that I was making at 25 and collagen is in everything. I mean, that's the elasticity of your skin, your nails, your hair. Um, it's, it's what's making it. It's, it's what's around your heart, your lungs. Like, I mean, collagen is everywhere in your body. Mm -hmm. So taking a good collagen supplement is great. Here's the kicker though, right? There's all kinds of different quality levels of collagen, right? The, the, the Vita proteins, I think with, um, Jennifer Aniston that's on there and it's, it's a big seller on Amazon. It just has one type of collagen and it's the cheapest kind. So that's why that collagen is 20 bucks a bag. Right. Whereas you can go get another multi collagen. That's probably two, maybe even three times the price, mm -hmm. but it's going to be more effective because it's going to have five different types of collagen in there. Mm -hmm. Here's the other thing to really consider too. We make a collagen powder, so I can mm -hmm. speak on it intelligently. We've also put vitamin C um, by way of Camu Camu and Acerella Cherry into it because if you don't have enough vitamin C, you can't absorb collagen. Mm, so if you're if you're vitamin C deficient, you can right. drink all, all the collagen want, you right. want. It's not going to matter, and you're not going to produce collagen if you're vitamin C deficient. Your body's mm -hmm. not going to produce collagen. Mm -hmm. So this is and this is why it's so hard for the general public to know what to buy. You you go into a, a Sprouts or a Whole Food. And it's like, holy shit, what do I take? Right. Well, what did I hear here? What did I hear there? Um, and this is just the stuff I've learned from being in the space. So mm -hmm. another thing is collagen is not a complete protein on its own. It only has eight of the essential amino acids. We add tryptophan to ours to make it a complete protein with all nine essential amino acids. Why do we do that? Well, because your body is now going to recognize it as a whole food. It's not going to recognize it as a whole protein. And it's going to utilize all of it better. Mm. Then it's seen it as an incomplete. Mm -hmm. um, 
so that's, you know, so I think a collagen is a great thing to take. I take a scoop every day just cause I'm getting older. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's stuff to take that's, that's great for minimizing the plaque buildup in your brain. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get just different herbs to, for things like that. A mushroom supplements are great. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of good supplements out there to take. It's just understanding what, what is it that you're trying to do? Right. And are you not able to get that from your regular diet? If right. you're not, then consider trying a supplement. The other thing when you're trying out supplements too is, and I'm not, I'm, I'm one of these people, I can start taking a supplement and I don't feel any different. Right. And I'm like, this isn't doing anything for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's two things. So one, it probably is still doing stuff for me, even if I can't have that feeling, right? right. It's not like I'm taking a pre-workout. Now I'm jacked. Right. Um, but oftentimes when you stop taking a supplement is when you'll actually feel the difference of doing it. So if you're taking an immune mm-hmm. building, you know, building supplement that's made from mushrooms Mm -hmm. um, and you take it, you're not going to feel any different, but Mm -hmm. you also didn't get sick maybe all winter and didn't realize it. And then you stop taking it and you catch a cold or something like that happens. So there's, there's different ways to look at it and measure it. And some of it, you know, is just, it's going to be trust, Mm -hmm. right? Because you're just trusting like, Hey, I know I'm not getting this in my diet. Right. Um, So I'm going to supplement with it. Like a lot of vegans, right? Vegans have to supplement with B12. Mm -hmm. You're just not getting that B12 through your regular diet. So you've got to supplement with it. Mm-hmm. Right. So that, that to me is, is how I use supplements. Figure out what you're getting from your diet. How healthy are you eating? How many changes have you made? Don't just look to the supplement as a quick fix. I know there's a lot of people that pop a few supplements and then down a basket of fries. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm not saying any of that's wrong. I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> but it is. food shame but anybody. It is. We but... know. It is. It is wrong. I, we, we, I was, was going to say, I do it once in a while, but it, we know it's wrong. <laughs> I mean, not wrong, but yeah, it's, uh, it, you're not going to want to do that every day if you want to live optimally or healthily or, you know, long. <laughs> and, and it's, Listen, like I, and I've been there, I've been fat, so I can say the F word, right? It, I was 265 pounds and, and I went to bed every night dreaming of being skinny, right. wishing I was skinny, thinking myself there, I'm going to work out tomorrow. I'm going to walk tomorrow. Right. I'm going to change stuff. And it's depressing, mm-hmm. right? And so it's, I feel better at 43 mm-hmm. than I did at, you know, 25, 30, 35, as I was getting fatter and fatter and fatter and could right. do less and less stuff. And so I don't buy into the notion. I'm sorry that, you know, being fat is healthy. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's, I think that, um, I don't think that we need to be lean and ripped either. Right, right. But I also, I think that there's a certain level of obesity that's not healthy for you. Oh, of course. And it'd be yeah. a good idea to lean out a certain amount. And I think it'll help you mentally and physically. I asked a nutritionist, uh, one time I was like, well, what's the best diet, right? There's this and there's this and there's this and there's this. And, and she said, if somebody is overbese or, you know, significantly overweight, the best diet is anything that's going to get the weight off of them the fastest. She said, I don't care if they yep. do keto. I don't care if they, she goes, I don't care what they do to, to, for the most part. Right. It's because the weight itself is causing the problem. The weight is the the effects of the weight on the body are so dramatic, even if they're not experienced, even if they're numb to the effects of it at that point, um, that you just got to get the weight off. And then once you get off the weight off, then you can start looking at refining and honing. And maybe now you're looking at whole foods and organics and, you know, where you're starting to really tweak and refine it. She said, but the most important thing is just getting the weight off. Cause I've known people that have done great on keto or they've done great on paleo or they've been great on, you know, whatever. Um, but the biggest effect was just the weight itself coming off was the big effect, right? That was where they got off the blood pressure medicine and, or if they were, you know, had met a close to metabolic syndrome that that reversed or you know, whatever the case may be, it was the sheer weight. And then, and then if you want to really be healthy, I think, yeah, then you have to start looking at the supplements and, uh, you know, the organic I, food and whole foods and balanced diets. And I don't, I personally don't think keto is great for a lifestyle choice. I think it can be very effective at weight loss and, you know, periods of time through your life. I think it could be effective. Um, but that's my own personal opinion. So, well, I, I, that's just it. Everybody wants a one size fits right. all right. diet, and we're not one size fits all, right? right. We're, we're different ethnicities. We, you know, we come from different parts of the world. Our heritage is different. It's mm-hmm. going to be different for different people. You have to find what works for you. I mean, ultimately, I, I would say that I'm, you know, it, it's a energy balance, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's, it's as much as people don't want to hear it, it's the calories in and then the calories out. How much are you spending? Why does keto work? Well, because you're eliminating an entire macro nutrient, <laughs> right, right, of, of right. carbohydrates. So right. you're likely eating less. If you eat 
keto and you just eat nothing but bacon and you go <laughs> and you're only burning 2000 calories a day. If you eat 2,500 calories keto, right. you're going to gain weight, Wait, right? right? There's nothing, yeah. it, it's not magical. And, and I know right. everybody's like, well, yeah, but you're burning fat for fuel. Yes. Because that's all that there's there to burn for that fuel right? Because you don't have the carbs there, but your body's storing a whole lot more fat because you're eating fat, mm -hmm. right? If you're eating a lot more carbs, you're going to burn those carbs for fuel, but you're not storing those carbs as fat. You're saving them to use it as, it's using it as fuel. Mm -hmm. So, and I did keto and I love keto. Keto mm -hmm. works well for me because I'm a sucker for sugar carbs. and yeah. bread. Yeah. Like I love, I love carbs. I yeah. love bread and a roll and you know, going out <laughs> to dinner, like stuff like that. Right. I'm so it works. I, I currently, how do I eat now is I eat an animal based diet, uh -huh. um, which is mainly meat and fruit. Mm -hmm. That works really well for me. I can get all of the, um, carbs and nutrients I need from the fruit and the mm -hmm. sugars and things like that to mm -hmm. fuel my runs and working out. Mm -hmm. And then I eat a lot of meat. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I still, I still take supplements, right? I'm not right. anti plant or anything like that. We make a, you know, a, right. a bunch of plant based supplements. Um, that's just what works for me because it allows me to stay. Um, it doesn't allow me to go off the deep end. Right. And eat all the breads and other sugar. Now I'm also, you know, I'm also not a weird dad either, right? Like I'm having cake with my daughters on their birthday. Right. We're getting desserts. I'll have a s'mores with them. I'm not, you know, just a, a total. Uh, I'm not so strict about it that right. it's not fun to hang around me either. Right. But 95% of the time, that's just a diet that works for me. And I think that's what people have to find out is what works for you. And if it's vegan, be vegan, right? right. If it's vegetarian, do that. If it's just eating potatoes fine. Um, likely it's not going to last long term, but if it gets you lean quickly, mm -hmm. then do that too. Right. Exactly. So much, uh, so, such a fun conversation, so much good stuff. So, uh, organics.com and then morningman.com is kind of where you can find more information about what you, you know, what your company does and the supplements it provides. Um, follow you on social media, I'm assuming, and other, other places, just Jonathan Hunsaker, or you're, or, or you, you off you social can, media. You can, you, you, you can look, you, but maybe not, you're not finding him. It's like, <laughs> you can follow not the brands on, yeah, you can follow the brands on social media. Okay. Um, it's, it's I'm not that guy just, it, 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 you know, I'm not posting. And I, I, think, right. I don't think I've posted on social media in, in over two years. Okay. Um, so you're like very that. active. So okay, follow great. the brands on there. <laughs> right. Um, and that's, that's where you're going to find me and find our information and articles and things like that is through the brands, through the websites. Perfect. Perfect. Well, we love it. Thank you for coming on today and we'll put the stuff in our show notes. And then, uh, if you have other topics or subjects you want to come on and, and, uh, add more light to, or if you're rolling out new products, you know, let us know and we'll be happy to learn about those and what they do and, and, um, you know, what they can do for health benefits. Cause I think all of us are, well, I shouldn't say all of us, but I think most people, as we get older, we want more energy. We want, a you know, more vitality. We want a healthier life because we start to feel the effects of all the stuff that we've done that's taken that energy away from us. So, it, you know, we need to reverse those things and lean in uh, to a healthier life. So I certainly appreciate you coming on today and adding some color. And Absolutely. Some wisdom. Absolutely. Yeah, Matt. And I, I um, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. And I don't have anything right off hand, but I'll get you a coupon code. Oh, perfect. Um, you can share with your listeners, okay. um, save yeah. like 25% off their first order just to Sweet. try it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, so we're organics with two X's.com and we have a one year money back guarantee. Mm. So you can take our supplements for nine months. And if you're not feeling anything, just send me back the empty bottles. We refund every penny. Um, oh, we're doing things a lot differently in the mm -hmm. industry. Most, most things are 30 day money back or 60 mm -hmm. day money back. Sometimes that's not long enough to feel the effects of it, mm -hmm. um, or, or what have you. And mm -hmm. so for us, it's much more about education. I've been through the transformation. I've lost a bunch of weight. I've gotten healthy. Mm -hmm. Like to me, it's, it's not about, you know, um, how, how many dollars can we squeeze out of the customer kind of thing? It's more about how many people can we heal? Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's why we do the one year money back. If it doesn't work for you, don't take it, right? right. Yep. <laughs> Send it back to us to get your money back. Um, but I'll give you a coupon code Perfect. that they can use for sure to save some money off the first order too. Yep. We'll put that in the, in the, in the notes and, and links to that. So we certainly appreciate that offer as well. So Jonathan, thank you for coming on today. Appreciate the, all, all of the conversation we had and look forward to having more in the future. Thank you for being a part of the Bright Vibe podcast. For more information, go to brightvibe.com. That's B-R-I-T-E, vibe, V-I-B-E.com. Thank you for listening.